Well, it's springtime in Idaho, and you know what that means. It means it's time for the pine pollen. Hi, I'm Dr. Patrick Jones from the Homegrown Herbalist School of Botanical Medicine, and, and this is a pine tree. You probably knew that, right? It's pretty obvious. Uh, but this is a red pine, Pinus resinosa. Um, very common species, uh, found just about anywhere in the United States, not because it's native anywhere in the United States, but because lots of people grow them. Uh, it is native to the Western states, but it's pretty common to find it. And uh, we're gonna kind of look at some of the structures here. So. The pine tree um, has male and female reproductive structures, okay? The female reproductive structures are the pine cones. Everybody knows what a pine cone is, right? In fact, here's one right here, an old one from last year. Uh, and that's the female structure. It makes the pine nuts or the seeds, right? Uh, but there's another structure that's important and that's the boy parts. And that's the pollen cones, they call them, or catkins. And the catkins produce the pollen, which then fertilizes the seeds, which then become the pine nuts, which then become pine trees, okay? So let me just show you some of the anatomy here on this branch. This, this guy's got everything. So down here, I mean, these are the needles, obviously. Um, here we have some mature pine uh, pollen cones, the catkins, right? So this is the boy part. And right next to it, we have an immature pine cone. Okay, so this is the boy and this is the girl, and uh, the pollen will get in there and fertilize these pine nuts, these seeds, and then they'll be ready to germinate. Up here on the end of the branch, you can see these little guys here, these are immature pollen cones, immature catkins. So in another week or so, these guys will be ready and they'll make pollen. You'll get maybe a second chance to get some pollen from this guy. And then of course, coming out of the end of that is the the growth, this year's growth of that branch, right? So this is this is, new pine branch growth here. So those are the structures. You got pine cones, male pine pollen cones, and uh, or catkins, and then some little immature catkins. In the spring, these pollen cones will form. They're very temporary structures. You know, they kind of pop out, do their things, and then they dry up and they're done for the year. The pine cones last a long time. At certain times of the spring, for our area, usually late May, they start opening up and releasing the pollen. And they only do that for a day or two, you know, and then it's gone and done and they dry up and, and are, are done. Uh, so you have to kind of watch them, give them a little flick and that's how you tell if there's any pollen in them. So what's it good for? Well, pine pollen is, uh, a, first of all, a phenomenal nutritive. It's, it's got tons of vitamins in it. It has tons of uh, antioxidants in it. So really an extraordinary nutrition source. And I think anybody would benefit from adding some pine pollen to their diet on a pretty regular basis. Uh, a teaspoon of that a day would give you an enormous uh, number of nutrients, vitamins, uh, minerals, antioxidants, all kinds of good stuff. Um, and so how do you collect it? Well, it's easy to collect. There's a couple of ways. One is, you can put a brown paper bag over the end of this and whack the bag and you know the pollen will fall off into the bag and you look in the bag and sure enough there's yellow powder in the bag. Uh, that's kind of the labor intensive way to do it. The other way to do it is to um, just collect these catkins and tincture them, the whole thing, right? And the, the pine pollen is a little bit resinous, it's a little bit oily uh, chemically and so it's not very water soluble so Usually when I'm tincturing herbs, I'm almost always using vodka, you know, 100 proof, 80 proof vodka for everything. Um, for these guys, I like it to be 60, 70% proof rather, 60 to 70 proof. Um, that just seems to be a little better at extracting all those uh, chemical properties. So what's it good for medicinally? Well, medicinally, pine pollen is tremendous for supporting testosterone functions in men. Okay, it's sort of a botanical phytotestosterone, all right? And uh, so what does that mean? Well, that improves libido, it improves fertility, um, it helps to put on muscle mass, right? All the male characteristics 
that testosterone is doing when a guy's 20 that he would like it to be doing when the guy's 50, right? And so pine pollen is really a tremendous herb for that. There's all kinds of plants that are good for the girls. You know, it seems like there's <laughs> so many plants that have phytoestrogens or regulate female hormones and fertility really well, but there's just a handful of them that are helping out the guys with that sort of thing. And pine pollen is probably the rock star of that group. So there you go, that's pine pollen. Really a tremendous nutritive, really a tremendous herbal support uh, for men. Um, and the trees are just beautiful, great trees. I'm Dr. Patrick Jones. Uh, if you don't have a pine tree and you'd like some pine pollen, we can help you out with that over at homegrownherbalist.com. We've got the, the pine pollen there. And until then, I hope you've enjoyed it. Let me tell you one other thing. We have a lesson in the school uh, about pine. I just We just finished it. And it's not just the pollen that's the medicine. The needles are astoundingly good. The bark has functions. This lesson, it, the video for that lesson's over two hours long probably. You know, it's a huge big thing because this is a phenomenally beneficial medicinal plant. So if you'd like to really dig in and really learn about pine and the amazing medicinal applications, 